What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we got a brand new video series coming out where we're going to be looking at and reviewing the SSI Diver Stress and Rescue Program. The purpose of this series, just like all of our series, is to help you pass your final exam when you're taking this course. Now we do want to put a disclaimer, you need to seek out your local SSI Diver Stress and Rescue instructor to get proper training before you go out and practice any rescue skills. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into chapter one. So the first thing that you're going to see in chapter one is stress. What is stress? Is it real? Is it something that we make up? Is it something physical? Well, there's different types of stress, whether it's mental stress, physical stress, maybe you're even dealing with some type of sickness or illness, and this stress can actually affect you when you're underwater. So the first thing that we need to do, of course, is to define stress. Your SSI Diver Stress and Rescue instructor is going to go over stress and all the different types of stressors that you're going to deal with as a diver. Now the second part of chapter one, we're gonna look at the four major types of stress, whether it's personal stress, learned stress, a physical stress, or even a social stress. Maybe it's even peer pressure that's causing this. And this is something that you're gonna to have to learn to deal with it. If it's something you learned from your parents or your instructor, that would be the learned stress. If it's social stress, I know personally, I always tend to fall to peer pressure a lot of times. And that peer pressure or that social stress can cause me to do some dumb things when I'm underwater. So we're gonna to have to learn how to deal with the four types of stress and how we can overcome them so that we do not allow stress to actually become panic when we're diving. Now, the next part of chapter one that we want to talk about is who is vulnerable to stress? Is it always just going to be that freshly certified diver or maybe the student taking an open water course? Or can a seasoned professional like myself be vulnerable to stress? And the short answer is yes, we are all vulnerable to stress. I can tell you from personal experience, every time I take a brand new open water student out to do their four certification dives, I am pretty stressed. And I kind of ask them a question, hey, if something happens to you underwater, do you feel safe and confident that I can handle it as an instructor? And their response is nine out of 10 times, yes. Well, then I ask them, what if something happens to me? Do you feel like you have the knowledge, skills, equipment, and experience to actually take care of me of under, uh, while underwater? And the response is usually, no, we don't. And that makes me stressed as an instructor. So yes, we are all vulnerable to stress because anything can happen at any given time. And so we need to learn how to overcome that stress, like I said before, so that stress does not actually become panic. So now that we determine what stress is and who it actually affects, we can learn how to overcome stress. Now I do wanna say a little bit of stress is gonna be okay because it's gonna keep you on your toes, but you never want that stress to just overtake you. And there's a simple procedure that you can do to overcome stress. The first thing that you need to do, as soon as you come across, say a stressful situation, maybe a low on air situation, an entanglement or a leg cramp or something of that sort, the first thing you do is simply stop. Now, as you stop, you're gonna simply be breathing. We're gonna to try to perfuse more O2 so that our brain's gonna work correctly. Now, once we've done that, we need to think about what's causing this stress. Why is my leg cramping up? Is it because I got the wrong fin on or maybe I'm kicking the wrong pattern or maybe my fin strap is broken or am I breathing too heavy because I'm dealing with a strong current? And we're gonna think about what's causing this stress and how we're going to overcome it. Then we're gonna simply breathe again. After we do that, we're gonna simply act upon what we thought about and we're going to fix said problem. Now, after that, of course, we're going to breathe. There's a common denominator here. We're simply going to continue to breathe throughout the process. That way we're perfusing more O2. Our brain's going to continue to work the way it needs to, and we can solve just about any problem while underwater. Now, a lot of times divers will let stress go into panic mode, and that's where the fight or flight sets in, and we actually want to prevent that while we're underwater. All right, guys, that's going to do it for chapter one. If you got any questions on chapter one, please drop me a comment down below. Before you go out and do any type of special rescue skills in the water, please seek out your local SSI diver stress and rescue instructor so that he can give you the proper knowledge, skills, equipment, and experience to go out there and be a successful rescue diver. Stay tuned. We've got five more videos in this series where we're going to be looking at the different types of stress before a dive, during a dive, and after a dive, and how we can overcome all that as well. So I really think it's going to be an interesting series for you, and it's hopefully going to help you pass your final exam. But that's going to be it for this video. So until our next one, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.